I'm here tonight with Sam, head brewer from the Brass Castle Brewery in Malton. Uh, just, we've just been working for him recently. Um, we've laid floors for, for the brewery a number of years ago now. We're just getting, getting in touch with him to get some insight into his job and into the brewery. So Sam, can you tell us a bit about yourself and uh, Brass Castle Brewery? Yeah, uh, so I'm the, luckily the current head brewer of Brass Castle Brewery. Uh, I got involved with them through building their tap house, um, which was about three and a half years ago. Uh, since then, um, I basically was offered a job after finishing that, which I was very happy about. Brass Castle was my favourite brewery before I even started the job. Um, so obviously very privileged and happy to be in this position. Uh, since then, I've sort of moved up through the ranks and I'm now head brewer. Um, I'm not going to pretend I have a background in brewing, um, but I do have a, I've always had a bit of a uh, sort of uh, passion for fermenting anything and everything. Um, so it seemed like a very natural and uh, happy progression to do. A passion uh, for beer and a, and a, and a good work, work ethic, maybe. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Always love beer. And uh, I am, yeah, no stranger to work, working hard uh, to get the job done, uh, which obviously works well for the company and myself. Um, so, yeah, very happy to, to be here. Uh, very happy to be in my current position and uh, just enjoying life in general. Obviously, it's been a bit stressful over the past few months. Um, but uh, yeah, we're, we're sort of we're on top of things. Things are start, starting to get back to the normality to us, and it's not for everyone else. Um, but it's sort of we all see the sort of light on the horizon that it's going to be. Uh, we're getting back to just being able to go down to the pub and enjoy a drink, which is sort of what. We're yeah, it's been about. tough. I'm looking forward to a bit more normality. We're certainly getting a bit busier, so hopefully everyone will, you know, and we will see that normality, whatever the normal is going to be. Yeah, I was happy to uh, we'll ring up a few weeks back and say, right, we need a quick fix on the floor and find that you're still going on, cracking on, and we're able to come out in about two days, I think, and uh, sort out the, 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 the slight problem we had before. So. Well, we're, all, we're always pretty responsive, to be honest, but you know, at, at the time, we, it, work had died for us anyway. You know, We didn't have much at all through the week. Uh, so, yeah, it was nice to come and do, do that work for you. So, uh, yeah, do you want to tell us a bit more about, about the actual facility where you work and the size of it and how it's set out and what have you? Yeah, so, um, I mean, uh, I think we first did the floor for us about seven years ago in 2013 when we first moved there. This was before my time. Um, it was a nice size building back then. Uh, we had a um, we had the usual brewery set up, uh, mash tun, kettle, and then a few fermenters and a few conditioning tanks. Since then, we've grown um, to up production and up uh, sort of range of products. So we've gone from doing just cask, the uh, cask and keg, and now we're doing cans as well. Uh, as of about two or three years ago, uh, we got our own canning line about a year and a half ago, which is fantastic. Save our uh, business basically over the whole COVID period, and we've able to get uh, probably more direct customers, which is grand. Uh, we are struggling for space now, um, but we're still cracking on just fine. Um, and yeah, it's it's a nice building in Malton, which is about halfway between York and Scarborough. Uh, it's a great little town, uh, fantastic for it. Sort of like it's a they sort of market themselves as the sort of food capital of North Yorkshire, which to be fair, they do a good job of. Uh, they've got a tofu factory, they've got a, another brewery, Bad Seed, who we work quite closely with, which is very nice. Um, nice place to be, close enough to home, and uh, we've got our own tap house in front as well. So obviously, people who are getting up there can enjoy some of our beers, basically like almost from tank. It's just straight up, which not even over the road. It's over the uh, small space in between, which is essentially our little uh, loading yard for when we're working, and we have to drag our pallets out the workplace to actually get in the place and do something. It is, it is a bit a bit tight up there, isn't it? On the side oh, yeah. of you. Oh yeah. Probably. Yeah, we're well, getting the deliveries out, but getting a, yeah, look, a bigger premises is on the horizon, hopefully, but uh, it's still we will see. It's in the, <laughs> in the pipeline. <laughs> and what what about your capacity? For, the, the actual capacity for getting beer out? Have you got figures on how much you make yeah, a, a well, week? Or does it does it vary yeah, on every week? Yeah. 
Yeah, 12 barrel brew kit, which is about just shy of 2,000 litres, and we're brewing three or four times a week. Obviously, it's been a bit different over the past few months. Uh, I think we may be under egged just how basically how many people are passionate about the beer and willing to buy stuff in, which has been fantastic. So, we did slow things right down at the start of the COVID uh, pandemic, and uh, we've, we've been creeping up steadily as we've gone and found out people are still happy to. Get beer and and you know straight to straight to the homes, which is fantastic. Well, so did you sort of run yeah, run, yeah. run stops? Did you run stocks down, thinking it was going to drop off, and then realizing it should have been yeah, ramping it up? Was. Yeah, we yeah yeah. Essentially, we, we we before before everything hit, we were doing about four brews a week, which is what uh, eight thousand liters a week. Uh, we were we we set we, <laughs> we actually yeah. Uh, at the start of it, we went down to about half brews per week just to keep the use going because we have our own uh, house brewing, which basically means that we have to we brew our beer with it and then we crop it again, and it's our, your own unique style, uh, which is fantastic to have. Uh, just it was purely we were brewing to keep that going, um, just to see how things went. And pretty soon we were like, right, we need to be cracking on with this again. And we were down to about three members of staff, and most of those were sales guys. So it was just me in the brew house. And it was it was interesting. <laughs> uh, we're now back up to full brew house staff, thank God. Um, and yeah, we're brewing three, four times a week again. So we are. We're, it's still a lot more effort because we're putting more in small pack, but we're getting it straight to customers. We're getting a lot more feedback, a lot more of a sort of more direct customer relation, which is really, really, really nice. Uh, it's just interesting hearing direct feedback from the consumers and you know how they're taking it. Just also being able to see on the on the uh, shipping labels that you're getting repeat customers from the same people week on week, and you just know they're enjoying it. And it's, it's fantastic. Just a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, I suppose it's, 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 yeah, it's good to see that people are enjoying what you're doing, isn't it? Good, good yeah. feedback. Yeah. yeah. Without even speaking to anyone. I, yeah, I got into it because I, I used to sneak off on lunch breaks in my old job. Just if I saw a glass castle was in the pub, I was like, great, fantastic, love it. And just to see that other people have that same sort of feel. And as I say, we work, we work very close with Bad Seed and we're, we're shipping out some of their stuff as well in small pack and we've been canning for them as well. So just to be able to help other fellow brewers as well is, you know, it's, it's nice. It's what it's all about. Is There's never any... It, People often think that there's, you know, two breweries in the same town, there's going to be a lot of competition, but it's just, it's not. It's a nice sort of cooperative sound of thing. It's, it's, it's grand. Well, everyone needs to change, don't they, from the, from the other beer every now and again, don't they? You like to mix it up. Well, I do anyway. I'll drink anything. Um, yeah. yeah. I was going to say, is there, is there not another way of keeping... <laughs> you, you mentioned your uh, your own strain of yeast. Is there not another way of keeping that going other than keep, you know, brewing it in the big kit? You know, like obviously, if you're doing sourdough, you keep it in the jar in your cupboard. But <laughs> yeah, no, no, you, you, you can do a very similar thing. Um, the, the, the slight issues are you, when you... When you I, I, when you're doing a sourdough, you have a small jar, and you will then, you know, you, you'll you'll reinvigorate it the night before to, to do a nice loaf of bread. Uh, with the beer yeast, it's a bit different because you're going to be doing 2,000. If you're doing a full brew, it's 2,000 liters of beer, so that that yeast needs to be very healthy in large quantities, ready to be accepted into the next batch of beer. So what you could do is you could do a um, small propagation batch, and it's batch in about like a well, like a, almost like a home fermenter's uh, little drum, plastic drum, uh, which is about 20 litres. Uh, but to keep that going often enough to make sure it's invigorated enough for the next batch of yeast week on week, and yeast is much quicker acting than a sourdough as well, because it's a single strain as opposed to a uh, almost a, uh, uh, like a collection of wild yeast. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like sourdough is a mixture of bacteria and yeast, and they both keep each other in check, so they're a little bit slower. Whereas a single strain of yeast, it needs to be kept quite virile and healthy. So we, we could do it, and when we get a, we, we keep our, our unique yeast on store with, um, oh, I can't say, I forgot, <laughs> I forgot who hold it. But basically, we can get a new batch from them uh, if, that, if anything happens to our yeast, which is the table safe. And we will propagate it and then crop uh, and then crop into a, a large batch yeast. But yeah, if if we were to do the smaller drums, it, it's not the best way of keeping yeast yeah. healthy and make sure it's ready for it when we need it. So it's better to keep full batches going and 
So that's another another way the gaffer just tells you not to have a day off is to say we need to keep this yeast yeah, on. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> Stands there with the whip. Don't like, kill my yeast. Like Christmas time, obviously, grand. We get a few weeks off, but we still have to be in two or three times throughout the week just to make sure that yeast is healthy. We've got to keep brew going throughout that just to make sure that yeast, that yeast is uh, kept at its best. But small price to pay because it's it's very nice that people can usually tell a bass castle beer to like yeast strain and not many breweries do it in the uh, in the north of England anyway at the moment. A lot of it's dried yeast very quick and instant, but keeping your house your house yeast is it's something people know you by. It's, yeah, it's, I'll yeah. I'll see if I can isolate the, the, the taste of the yeast next time I'm drinking your beers. So like I say, I've tried I've tried a few and uh, you have you have given me a few samples as well. So thanks for that. Uh, <laughs> So we just talked about the yeast. What about your other ingredients? Where 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 are they coming from? Do you have local stuff, or is it all over the shop? Yeah. Uh, so um, before this meeting, I was just on the phone to uh, Lawrence over at Paul's Malt, who uh, they have places all over the country, but the closest one is in Napton, which is not far from us at all. So very local, all grown in England. Uh, best best country for well, one sorry, one of the best countries for malt. Uh, the malt, the hop growing over here isn't great. Uh, we get most of our hops over from America, but as far as malt goes, uh, yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, very good extraction, uh, easy to get hold of because obviously we're growing over here. Guys at Paul's are absolutely fantastic at getting us sorted out if there's ever a last minute change in the brew schedule, which happens fairly regularly, so they can uh, get some to us. Uh, they pinch of a hat, drop of a hat. Um, yeah, like I say, I've, I've, we're, in a, we're in a very lucky position that we're in, we're in England. We can grow our own malt. Obviously, you're looking at, and we, we go through about a tonne and a half to two tons of malt a week, and we go through maybe, I don't know, we're looking at about, well, depending on what we're brewing, 20 to 30 kilos of hops a, a hops a week. So I'd be much rather uh, importing the hops rather than having to import the malt, which they do in America. So, America is always going to be able to brew much more hoppy beers, fresher beers um, over there because they're growing there, which is fantastic, but they're still importing a lot of their malt from us just because they know it's the best. So I think we are in a, we are in a lucky position that we are, all our malt is locally grown and uh, the water is also great as well, particularly for hard beers. One of our nice dark beer, our water is fantastic for growing, uh, sorry, for brewing dark beers. So that's sort of what we're, Bad Kitty in particular is a, a little flagship beer of ours. Um, and we do a stronger version of that, just, you know, keep it interesting. Just consume is, that, is that one of the reasons why American beers are, are hoppier? Because they use more hops? Or is it, I thought it was just different oh. hops. No, yeah, no, definitely. I mean, the, the, the best hops in the world are, uh, people will argue, uh, the best hops in the world are grown in America, New Zealand and Australia. Uh, like hot, hot climate, in uh, no, American particular, fantastic hops. But they literally just put more hops into the brew as well. Uh, well, they're cheaper, so yes, they can. Yeah. Uh, they're not being imported, so obviously there's a, there's a price difference there. Uh, a lot of the American brewers as, as well are, they're not quite as traditional as us, so they're, they're much newer, so they have a different system in that they'll have a four-step system in which they have a mash tun, a lout tun, a kettle and a whirlpool. And the whirlpool is a big difference in that you get much, uh, much, a uh, much fuller utilization out of your hops in the whirlpool. But also, they're just fresher, so uh, hops lose quality uh, in, in quite a fast rate as opposed to malt, which just holds it. You germinate your malt, uh, store it, and just push it out. Hops need to be uh, nitrogen flush and kept cool. Um, Obviously, it works. We get great hops over here, but fresh from America, just fantastic. Like, is it basically? Is it like? Is it a flower? Uh, yeah. Oh. So, uh, yeah, we actually have a we actually have a cute little hop growing outside of our brew house in Malton. Uh, it's in a little half barrel. I think we had hops about two years ago. We managed to get some hops out of it. Uh, they were useless. Like they were all right for a bit of bittering. Uh, and we have had some UK grown hops, but again, we would only use them for bittering. They're not nothing you get much flavor or aroma from um, so the hop is the, the flower uh, of a hop plant which is part of the cannabis family 
uh, it grows uh, in hedgerows. They like their roots kept wet and moist and dark, and then they will grow up into the uh, hedges and the trees, and they will flower. And then you grab it before they um, get pollinated and go to seed. And then it's the it's the actual it's almost the pollen. It's it's called lupulin, uh, which is the actual seed, which is the flavour and the aroma. And it's all different. There's there's a lot of money in hops. They will they're quite precious on their own strains. So when you buy citra, it's a trademark hop name. It's not a specific variety of hop, which in the case of citra will give you a lot of like tropical fruit flavors and a lot of like lemony citrusy flavors on the fruit. Um, so yeah, there's, there's lots of different strains. Um, from America, you've got citra, summit, uh, Chinook. <laughs> Fucking spot you. Uh, but yeah, um, lots of different types of America, and they all have, they're all their own different flavors. And yeah, it's just flower, and you, it's that sort of it's essentially the pollen from the flower that is giving you the flavor and the aroma that you want from the bit, and also bittering as well, which is very important. So when we uh, charge into the kettle, if you add it early into the boil, you're going to get a lot of bittering notes. You're not going to get much aroma or flavor, and then later into the boil or even cooled after the boil, you're going to get that. You get like your flavor aroma from the fruit. So early on for bittering, and later on for uh, flavor and aroma. So that's a, that, that'll be a big part when you're developing developing new beers. You you play about with that the timing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we're hopefully at some point in the future looking at getting a whirlpool uh, or even just a new brew kit or even a bigger premises would be fantastic. Um, so yeah, getting a whirlpool would make a massive difference in that you can control the temperature you're adding those hops at and how long they're held and you get a much better extraction. Yeah, so recipe development, yeah, key is people in the play the malt, um, but it does make a big difference for the colour, the base flavour and the sweetness in the body. Uh, but hops is where people really see a lot of difference, especially now uh, in when you're adding them, how you're adding them. Cool, yeah, nice bit of info there. There's a lot of things I didn't know about, about hops, basically. Yeah, I, I just knew that American beers were quite quite distinctive. I didn't know whether that was actually to do with the, the strain of the hops or, or the process, but it sounds like it's down to oh, exactly. a bit of both, basically. So the, just to touch back on your premises there, I mean, you want, you want to tell us about why, why you needed our services and what, what we did for you? Yeah, like I said, the floor went in originally in 2013. Uh, we're very lucky to have a uh, quite a well put out space. And I was speaking to you last time, I didn't realize that the floor and the floor are actually quite magnificent in our place. We have a big central grain, which would swallow any waste. Um, the floor has been absolutely sound until, well, it takes a lot of punishment. Uh, I say we're, we're dealing with boiling work, which is at 100 degrees, if not plus, it's a sugary substance as well, which will hold a bit more heat anyway. Uh, and also a lot of harsh chemicals when we're cleaning the tanks, uh, which is subject to the, the entire floor. I take from all that because it, there's, there's always chemicals in use. Um, but we've had one spot in particular, which is just by our kettle, which is obviously where it gets the most, the most hottest and the biggest concentration of chemicals. And we think we've had two or three repairs over the last two years. Up until then, we had nothing. Um, and yeah, it's just it's just taken a bit of, bit of punishment over the years. And uh, we're obviously we're we're very hygiene, so that floor is there, so that anything that comes out of that kettle is just swept straight away down the drain and out of the way, or anything out of the tanks is stretched straight away. Last thing you want is anything any. Uh, putting a uh, kettle runoff or yeast runoff from the when the tanks are being smelling some of the it's a bit of an odd smell it's because their cell is not kept right and there's bicolic acid forming down there where the where the uh, beer is basically turning into vinegar. Uh, and other stuff. So uh, yeah, if we see any cracks or bumps in the floor, uh, we'll give you guys a ring and uh, get you out quick, fast to get it fixed. And we've always De had a it's definitely worth nipping anything. Definitely worth nipping anything like that in the bud 
quickly. You know, if you yeah, see any yeah. cracks or any holes opening up, it can, can get quite. It can get quite bad. Not, it's not going to happen overnight, but you do need to no, get those things in the book. We've only had a bulge the once, which was literally the last time when we just held off bringing you because we knew it was the COVID, the whole COVID situation. Like, we'll hold off and we'll just wait until everything settled down. Obviously, it didn't quite as quick as we hoped it might have done. Uh, and that's the only time we've seen the bulge. The rest has just been little cracks and we just went, right, get them in, get it sorted. Uh, and it's usually, I'll say, if we're getting the toilet replaced, it's just by the kettle we need to not brew in. So we've always just talked to you guys and been like, right, when can you make it work for us? Uh, so that I'm stalled schedule. And uh, yeah, it's always been fantastic. It's always been sorted within a few days and we're back on it again. Yeah, the very, very hard working floors, you know, the tip, like you know, they, they take the heat, they take the chemicals and that's that's what they're made for. The standard in the brewing industry do keep us busy. Um, so obviously the, the, the repairs you've had on the floor have just, meant you can keep keep business going smoothly, I suppose, and keep it safely, safely and smoothly, I suppose. Yeah, definitely. I think we, like we maybe lost like a brew day in the past or something, which is nothing uh, for, the, for, the, for making sure that floor is sound and ready to roll, which is it's crazy how important it is. It really is. Uh, well, we, I've been to brew houses in the past that have got concrete floors and the state of it is just not pretty. But it's like concrete just... Yeah, it's surprising how quickly the, the acid in the beer will eat away the concrete. Yeah. The, and the heat, yeah. the, it, well, even 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 water, mm-hmm. even just pure water, just dripping on the concrete is going to eat it away eventually. But you were throwing the heat and the acidic beer, then you can be in trouble fairly quickly. So you guys getting the, 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 pe- the polyurethane floor in there at the beginning, it's, it's a big, big, big step, That's and awesome. but it needs, it needs doing, it really needs doing in our industry. Yeah. Uh, so just yeah, just touching on on the industry in general. I mean, and, and thinking about wrapping this interview up. If if, if if anyone's listening now and they're thinking about getting into the brewing industry, what what advice would you give them? Uh, number one is don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number two would be uh, get around as many brew houses as you can. Uh, see their layout, how they operate. Main thing would be look at their cold store space because your cold store can never be big enough. Um, look, look, look for someone else's mistakes. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same with everything, really. Um, like, yeah, just when it comes to us and see how we're operating, we are. I, I'd like to think we're doing very well in a uh, very limited space and also quite a rudimentary kit. Uh, it works, but I, I could, I could. Give you a list of under armour ways that we can improve and that everyone else can avoid, but we could go on for another hour. <laughs> well, there's always room for improvement, but you do seem to be doing very well. Your beers, your beers are extremely tasty, it, so there's a no, <laughs> two in fact, in all honesty, number one, I would say is get a decent floor because if you are, we keep it clean, keep it clean. Um, the one way of doing that is having a floor where you can just swirl things down and it's gone and out of the way. Last thing you want is things sitting around in a a simple concrete floor or somewhere else. No. <laughs> right, well, thanks for that, Sam. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. Second time round. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Recorded this time, right? <laughs> Def- it, it says, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll take a photo on my phone. It says recording. It's off right. I'm going I'm to do, do it. It says it's recording, so... <laughs> <laughs> if, if it's not, I'm blaming, I'm blaming my technology and not myself. But yeah, uh, appreciate you, uh, appreciate your time last week and this week. Um, and yeah, we'll send you some clips from this and see where we get to. But yeah, all the best. Yeah, th- yeah, thanks for that, Sam. We'll, we'll, be, we'll, we'll get this. will get cut now. So yes, yeah, spot on, mate. Spot on. Don't worry about what, it. Than... What, what are you doing with the rest of your evening? Getting some food and going to bed. I'm shattered. What time do you start? Uh, in fact, you, it's half seven, so I can't complain. We used to start. We used to start about six. So, but train. Obviously, public transport's been cut, so half seven can't complain too much. It's it's uh, not so bad. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a bit sleep deprived at the minute. I've got two young kids, and I'm up, I'm up at just just before six every morning with them. So. But um, yeah, so Matt's been getting in and brute mashing in for a lot of beers, and he gets up at about five just because his kids like jumping in bed and waking him up. So. 
I, I, I don't have to get up during the night with him, so that's that's all right. So I can't, I can't well. Yeah. Right, so yeah, I'll wrap that up because my wife is upstairs th thinking, come help me, believe me. <laughs> so I'll, I'll go and sort that out. But yeah, just give give us a shout. Need anything else? Um, I will. I will have to get. I'm going to get online and order some beer off you anyway. So I did enjoy that. I did, did, sure. did enjoy the disruptor. Very nice. Yeah. So, but yeah, I'll get. I assume it's just BrassCastle.com or whatever. I just it was just on right on the website, is it? Yeah, I think. But yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll find it. I should, probably should have asked you that as part of the interview, you know, where do we buy your beers? Do you want me to do that? And then they might get cut in. Do you know, yeah. do you know where to buy the beers? Do you know where to buy the beers? The <laughs> it must be back, it must be back at UK. So our email, email addresses are uh, back at UK. Brass Castle. I don't even have the phone number. But yeah. Oh. I mean, we'll put your we'll put your branding all over it, so people people will find you in no time just by typing Brass Castle. I won't worry about it. Yeah, there's only one Brass yeah. Castle brewery. And, yeah. Yeah, anyway. yeah, it was just a bit of an after just a bit of an afterthought of that, but uh, yeah, don't worry about it. They'll, they'll find you on everyone. Yeah, they'll find you. But I'm, I'm gonna go and buy some anyway as a, as a as a thank you, if nothing else. Plus, I get to drink it. Sound right. Thanks a lot, Sam. No idea how to close this. So. You'll just brew it, don't you? You'll just brew it and drink it. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> cool. Thanks a lot. I'll see you around. Bye.